Hello, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Welcome to the Digital Marketing Podcast and Video Series, where we talk about digital marketing strategies and tactics to help grow your business. In 2020, we are entering into a very special time, and and that really centers around the fact that 2020 is an election year. I did an episode, uh, or actually a a three-part series back in July of of this past year, in 2019, uh, and the series was called The Social Web Effect of 2020, Gleaning Insight from the Facebook ads and activities of 2016, which really centered around the uh, Russian agency known as the um, uh, IRA um, and in the um, uh, that that acronym standing for uh, the widely known um, uh, name, which was the uh, gosh, what was that IRA? It's you know, gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Internet relation. Internet Research Agency, thank you, IRA. So in, in, in the whole series, and I'll put a link uh, in the blog to go back if you're curious about that. Uh, and it's really a deep dive into um, what the House Intelligence Committee reported um, through the um, Mueller findings with what Russia was involved with in uh, as far as social media activities specifically related Uh, to Facebook during this time period, and it is a fascinating read. But this post that I want to talk about today, today's episode, is about target audience obsession, digital manipulation versus authentic social inspiration from Russia with love. Yes, I'm a big James Bond 007 fan uh, from Russia with Love. I couldn't decide if we were going to go with that or if we were going to go uh, with the title of The Brand That Loves You. Um, nevertheless, this is fascinating. I came across a recent article um, that was posted in or published in Rolling Stone uh, online back in November, November 25th, as a matter of fact, my birthday. Uh, I came across this article that was published uh, in Rolling Stone and the title of that episode was, or that the title of that um, article was that uplifting tweet you just shared, a Russian troll sent it. What's fascinating about this story and, and how it connects with the three-part series that I did back in July about the social web effect and how the Russians uh, really hacked social media in 2016 Um it is fascinating because what what it really boils down to is this that Russia's plan of of disinformation isn't spread by accounts that you disagree with but rather with accounts that you identify with and that is something that is absolutely mind-boggling when you think about it. I guess not really. I mean, when you think about all the spy shows and you think about James Bond, you know, whenever a, 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 a Russian spy was trying to, you know, get information from their mark, what did they do? They, fa- they were obsessed with that person. They found out every little detail of that person's life because they want to use it against them, right? Well, what, what's fascinating about this particular um, article, and it points out the tweet um, and the, the account that was used, um, and, and I'm going to put a link to this Rolling Stone article as well, so you can go back and check it out. Um, and it was actually written by a couple of professors from Clemson, go ACC. Um, and I think that it's interesting that they point out that this uh, I am um, uh, Tyra Jackson Twitter account where she posts about uh, uh, Warwick Dunn, who's a former FSU football player, go FSU Knowles, um, you know, and, and actually the great work that he's done in building over 145 homes for single moms since leaving the NFL and 
the but but it was this very inspirational tweet and and as soon as she put it out like this tweet was like retweeted 290,000 times now to put that in perspective you know she had it, it was like an account that they created right it was just like a fake account and to have 290,000 tweets by a, a, a very unknown basically a fake troll Twitter account is insane but when you dig inside of it and you understand what is happening, when you understand that that the the actors that are playing this game that are a part of the IRA, and of course, you know, they've kind of switched their name now. And again, they mentioned that in the article. I'll let you look that up. But um, they're still heavy at work. And, and, and it's not just Facebook. Um, it's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. And what they're doing is, is something that as public relations and as marketing professionals, we often do a poor job at really going to the lengths that, um, you know, these, these characters uh, from Russia really go into because they dig deep into the emotional issues that matter most to the ones that they want to reach and they want to manipulate that those actions for the sole purpose get this guys they don't they really don't care if you vote for trump or clinton or whatever the point is creating a divide in the united states and in the citizens of the united states that's what's most important so it has nothing to do with candidate has nothing to do with you know the issue itself it it's the intent right that that they're trying to go after so again you know this this idea that you know understanding what's most important to people and then you know creating content around that 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 touches these emotional um kindling points that drives people to action that you know gets them to do things now here's the crazy point is as the Rolling Stone article points out, you know, the article when they clicked on it was actually a Trojan device, you know, with, with really horrible intentions. And this is something that, as I think Americans, we need to really get a hold of. But then also, uh, you know, from a, from a marketing standpoint, I can't help myself but to kind of sit back and think, they they are they are operating and and executing communication strategies at an expert level just phenomenal and why can't we learn from them but flip the switch you know why can't a brand or a company take a page literally out of the russian playbook and this is kind of what my three part series talked about last summer why can't we take a page out of that book and, and use it for good? You know, why can't we give, why can't we leverage this strategy and idea of really understanding who our target audience is? Can we become obsessed with our target audience, not for the purpose of manipulating them, but, but to actually create authentic inspiration because Here's the thing, and, 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 and this is the thing that's going to be so huge, I think, in 2020 for brands to understand is that when, when your brand has the ability to raise its awareness level, when you, when you go from no one knows what your name is to all of a sudden, you know, people are talking about you and, and you become, quote, an internet household name, like if you can achieve that, um, you, you are positioning your company and brand to succeed, right? And if you're doing things the right way and you're taking care of your people and you're taking care of your customers, you know, all of that goodness will come to the top and you will inspire others, you know, to be, to become a part of your family, to become a part of the, the brand loyalist, right? So that when you are going through your growth phase and, and planning your growth phase for 2020, you know, you've got a plan. So, you know, again, I want to circle back to this, you know, thinking like a Russian spy, but 
with the intentions almost of like, not to sound too altruistic, but like Nelson Mandela to bring people together, right? Like, so we want to have the understanding and the obsession and the paying attention to the details. And paying attention to the details is means, you know, creating content that, that connects emotionally with the people. And how do you know if you're doing that? You know that you're doing that if you're producing content that's causing people to act and comment and share and like. But you don't do that by talking at them, right? You, you do that with connecting with them on a, an emotional human level. And so I think that that is something that for, you know, public relations and marketing professionals in 2020, as we look to help other, to help our clients grow and achieve their goals and objectives, we need to have target audience obsession. We need to understand the, the emotional triggers and what's important, what is the most important thing? Like when, 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 you, when I think about target audience obsession, again, uh, everyone in our office is, is binge watching the, the Netflix show You, Y-O-U, the series You on Netflix, which of course is in its second season is absolutely just, you know, a, a you can't stop watching the show because it's just, you know, a train wreck, but um, <laughs> an incredible dramatic series. But it's all about, you know, these these characters that become obsessed with one another and obsessed with every movement and, and everything that's of interest so that they can prove their love and, and prove their loyalty, right? To, to earn that relationship, you know, to be able to call them, you know, mine, right? When can when when do brands get to the point where they can call their customers mine, right? You have to earn that. You don't get that through manipulation, right? I mean, I I, I think that we are you know at some level naive to manipulation, but then on other on other fronts, I think we are wise to it as well. So I, I you know I think there's uh, two sides to that one coin. So. If social behavior, one of the things that we've talked about before a couple of times um, on this uh, show is we've talked about how one of the behaviors, when you connect with people and when your content connects with people through the social web, one of the things that's going to happen is they're going to like and share because one of the core social human things that we do when we're on social media is to try to collect like-minded people, people who are like us. And I think that it's interesting in a recent article that Social Media Examiner put out this week, uh, earlier this week, I was I want to say it was on Monday, and I've really been thinking about it, and our, our staff has been talking about it, and how we're, you know, adapting is how, how Facebook has changed the location of the lookalike audience when you create the lookalike audience profile when you're setting up your campaign. And this is really important because the location – of, of where that happens and how it's tied literally to the location of where the ad is going to be shown uh, with, with regards to, you know, sort of geo-targeting. So again, if you're not familiar with lookalike audience, it's basically the concept of, you know, take a, take a source file, whether it's an email list or whether it's data that you have collected from the Facebook pixel that's on your website, or if it is, you know, um, you know, pixel data that is tracked by people who have made purchases from you or multiple purchases from you, you can say, okay, this group of people who, who have, have demonstrated a specific behavior, I want to target and I want to display ads to people who are most like that grouping. So the, the and again, uh, this would be a really long episode if I took a super deep dive into that. So I'll put a link to that in the blog post as well. So if you want to learn more about how that's all kind of changed, it's a recent change in uh, Facebook's ads, ads manager uh, for building your target audience and, and how that impacts your, your target and your ad budget. But the important thing is that in 2020, we have to be obsessed with our target audience and we need to be able to document and publish content in such a way that we connect with those who are most important to us, whether that be our customers, whether it be, you know, the people who, you know, um, you know, are, are, you know, the members of our association 
or you know our, our prospects that we want to do you know business with in the future so that idea of understanding and being obsessed with your target audience and then creating that lookalike audience and then publishing content specifically so that you can reach them and hopefully inspire them to take action that is unifying and not divisive as as the russians have so demonstrated and you know again kind of circling back and i am definitely probably the the, the least political type person so when i mention these things it, it it has nothing to do with any kind of political affiliation or or leaning one way or the uh, or the other i think the fact of the matter is is that it is just fascinating that you know here are these characters who are you know manipulating things on the web and everyone gets all up in arms that you know it's facebook's fault and the factor of the matter has has nothing to do with facebook what what social media has done it's just exposed a, a tendency in our own now yes these characters have manipulated the platform right but guys grow up we live in 2020 so it's not just facebook you're seeing this on twitter you're seeing it on you know instagram you're seeing it on on you know uh just any platform where where the social web is active and people have the ability to consume content and share their emotions and connect with people who are like them and they're going to do that so when you're looking at your digital marketing content creative for 2020 and you're trying to kind of create that editorial content calendar if you haven't already begun to do that, I hope that this session, I hope that this episode will inspire you to really become obsessed with what is most important to your target audience. And understand that when I say target audience, that you have segmented you know, areas of that audience group, right? Because different people decide to choose your brand, whether it's a product or a service, um, based on their interest and their interests are different than their neighbor's interest. And you need to become obsessed with each one of those segmented interests, right? You have to be, you have to become obsessed with the audience group, not with just the one profile. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have had a great week. Again, my name is Michael Wynn. I am the chief digital officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Have a great week and we'll catch you next time.